Hey guys, I'm Ben and welcome back to Talking Board Games. Today we are, well, you guessed it, talking about board game. The game is The Estates. Uh, this is a game that I had recommended to me. He said, uh, my buddy John, John if you're out there, uh, he said this was the single best auction game he'd ever played. He had a print and play of the original German version that he was just playing at home and he said it's coming to Kickstarter, don't miss it. Saw it on Kickstarter, I was like, eh, I didn't back it. But as the date got closer and closer to the release, I went ahead and pre-ordered it and man, am I glad I did. Uh, I'm just going to say it up front, I love, I adore this game. Um, but we'll get into why here in a second. But basically it's an auction game. Uh, you're going to be auctioning off various buildings that players have access to uh, build on the board. The interesting twist to this one is you will not always be auctioning off your own buildings or purchasing your own buildings. Uh, you may not even own stock in any of these different building companies. Uh, so it's really interesting and the, when it's your turn to auction something off, the selection is yours. So you can choose from amongst uh, roofs, uh, building permits, uh, different buildings themselves, all sorts of things, and it's your call. Whatever you think is going to turn the game in your favor, provide you with the most income, it's, it's really interesting. It's not really something you can explain, you kind of just have to experience. But let's go ahead and jump into uh, what my thoughts are on this crazy auction game, The Estates. Uh, first and foremost, the game is gorgeous when set up on the table. Uh, the blocks, I got some right here, they are just these gorgeous colors, I don't know if you can see that, but really bright, the designs on them really stand out, that printing. The board itself, the artwork's fantastic. Uh, so these are stacking up, you know, getting bigger. It just looks really good. Um, the, the money, the checks that you're using, that's a really cool idea, this thick cardstock. Really pretty looking game. Uh, next is the way the game works, everyone starts with a set amount of 12 million dollars. And this is the economy for the game. That's all the money that will ever be in the game. No one is making money. No one is spending money. This money is just going to fluctuate between the players. The only exception is when you embezzle. So embezzling is, gives you an opportunity to, you know, stash a million dollars at the start of your turn. And so, not only is it a closed economy, but this economy is going to tighten and ramp up as the game goes by because people have embezzled and there is less and less and less money out there later in the game really interesting um, but uh, you know what is there you just don't know where it is so that's kinda cool next the strategy in this game comes basically in the form of freedom uh, so you're free to auction what you want when it's your turn you have a choice from six different buildings uh, pulling out of the bag of the building uh, roofs or auctioning off one of the additional pieces being a permit the cancel the mayor um, one of those things. And so you have to assess the situation and look at what's best for you. Do you auction off your own building hoping to win it and place it out on the board? But maybe the offer comes higher than you're able to beat and now you're forced to allow an opponent to place your building. Uh, so a lot of interesting decision there. Do you offer up for auction what may be uh, the highest value building in the game knowing that someone's going to want to buy it to take stock in that company? Or maybe you know no one's going to want to get it, and so you'll get it for free. Interesting decisions as you're choosing what to auction, and that in therein lies the heart of the game. Uh, once again, it's not really something you can explain. You just have to experience it, because there definitely are better choices than not when it's your turn to select something to auction. Uh, next, there are a couple negatives. So while I do love this game, it's not going to be for everyone. First reason being is it requires all players to kind of have the same basic comprehension within the game. Uh, I played a game recently where the way it was evolving is every player was owning stock in one of these companies. And it had gone almost all the way around and there was the last color building to be auctioned off. And the player who didn't have any stock in any building had the last highest bid. But the person who auctioned it off decided that they would rather take it. They bid on it the higher amount, they paid it to them and they took it controlling three companies. That was just devastating. There's no way they were gonna come back from that. Owning three companies is very difficult to do because there's so much chance for uh, negative scoring. 
and the player who didn't own a company obviously had the upper hand at that point. So it was kind of frustrating because it could have played out very differently had that player comprehended at that point what would have been best for the entire table playing the game. But it'll happen. You you know, you play with those same people a couple of times, they'll catch on, they know the drill, and then you'll avoid that situation later. Uh, another negative is the game can be very mean and very frustrating. So the way that scoring works in the game is it's possible to score negative points. Uh, you're only going to score positive points for the buildings that you own that are in streets that get finished. So the streets that aren't finished are going to score negatively. And in addition to that, the mayor, depending on where it is placed, will double the score for that street for better or for worse. Um, and so, you know, half of the, the game is scoring points, the other half is trying to make your opponent score negative points. So there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, take that as you're buying someone else's building and placing it in a row where it's going to cause them to score negative, or maybe buying the cheapest roof, uh, the lowest valued roof, and putting it on top of their building to try and limit the amount of points that they get. And oftentimes you can't do anything about it. You don't have the money to be able to outbid them. And you're just sitting there watching this happen as your uh, real estate empire is crumbling. And while some people might enjoy that, some people might find that a little too much to handle. But uh, in the end, this game is phenomenal. It plays quick. Uh, it's simple. You're just selecting something to auction and then waiting to see who wins it. Play passes the next player. Um, it, I, I don't know. I can't recommend it enough. But like I said, it's not for everyone. But if you get the chance to play, I highly recommend it. The price point for all this gorgeous wood and components is really good. Uh, I think this is probably one of my most played games uh, of this year maybe even last year as well. I've played it a lot. It hits the table because everyone I've played with just absolutely adores it. That is The Estates. It's in the Simply Complex line, which is part of Capstone Games. So uh, if you're at your fairly level game store and you see it, check it out. I bet you'll like it. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm Ben. This is Talking Board Games, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.